For the most part these days, it's up to you if you want to wear one of these, but they are mandatory in some places like hospitals, and it's starting to become part of Canadian culture to wear one if you're sick, like in other places in the world. So they are not going away, and they really don't go away if you throw them away. See, they're not biodegradable, and it really bugs me when I just see a bunch of them littered all over. And it really bugs the prof here at the University of Regina. You're looking at different face masks and, and different materials, and then you're going, what could they be used for? She's actually doing something about it. What was the moment that you decided, you know what? I've been doing this kind of work of repurposing for years. Now I'm going to add face masks into the mix. Well, once the pandemic hit, and then you saw all these masks littering the sidewalks and coming in our waterway, that's when I went, let's do masks. This is the lab. Show me what step one is here. We get our masks collected from facility management. Right. So if, we, if you could just quickly put on um, a pair of gloves yep. just to protect us from any kind of nicks. Well, it's also, already been, uh, they've been dried and uh, there's no real virus in it. Like they'll- I was gonna ask. <laughs> so there's kind of no danger. So the first thing we do, if you wanna just pull off the elastomers, oh just so that we're gonna work with like polypropylene. And there's a metal nose piece in it. That's right. And then we will make like two or three or four of these. You can quickly kind of line them up, get rid of the, Elastomer. Gotta be faster. And the plastic. So the reason you're taking off these loops is because they're a different type of plastic, is they're, that right? It's a different material and it also may have a different uh, temperature that it actually melts at. I and see. so we don't want it to sort of biodegrade or catch on fire while our other things. We want to try to keep everything sort of uniform. Yeah, that checks out. Okay, and so this is what's gonna be combined with other products. Exactly, and then we'll make it into first a sheet that we'll cut down for tensile specimens, and then we'll look at what their properties are, or compression ones, and then afterwards, we'll make it into a block or uh, a product. Cool. So what we do is we play around with the combination of, of material. So this is crushed tire. As you can see, like there's cord in it, but it's basically tire, and this actually came from Shercom Industries in Saskatoon. Okay. They go throughout the whole province collecting tires, and then they have a machine that crushes it down. So I'm gonna make a plate that's 135 grams, and so I want 20% of that to be the crushed tire. So I want 27 grams. And we're gonna do the same, and we'll get sand. As you can see, sand is denser, so I won't need nearly as much sand, volume-wise, but we'll have the same weight. So we need another 60% from our polypropylene. Which is great because then you can use more, more masks. used masks exactly. to make something. And we know there's a lot out there. There's something like 129 billion used monthly around the world at the height of the pandemic in 2020. So this is a great way to use a bunch of masks into one thing. Into one small product. Just, just drizzle it on, on the mixture. And as you're drizzling it, I'm adding in the additive, and then we will mix this. And as you can see, you can feel you can, the sand is going to the bottom. Yes. So you need to kind of oh, squish underneath scoop it. Scoop it. And yeah. It feels like cookie dough. Then our next step will be, we'll put this in the mold. So how many masks do you think go into one tile? So each mask weighs just under three grams here, and we're making a plate that's 135 grams. So we need about 45 masks in one plate. It's a good use of a lot of used plastic. Exactly. Yeah. So now we've got the crushed tire, the mm -hmm. sand, and the oil, and everything mixed up. We're going to add it to the mold. All right. These are pretty heavy. They're aluminum. And so they're aluminum because they transfer the heat really fast, as well as they're lighter. Because if this was all made of steel, I wouldn't be able to lift it. <laughs> so that it compresses the fluffs enough so that it will not totally melt, or not totally disintegrate, but melt into the shape that you want it. Exactly, so 
it will, we'll press it, and then as it melts, we'll uh, tighten it with a torque wrench so we have a, exactly the type of pressure that we want on it. So we'll have it at a given temperature and a different pressure, and we'll make a plate. So from here, after I tighten each one of these bowls, we'll put it into the oven. All right. Now that we've put it in the oven, it's all fluffy, so we'll melt it, and then we'll tighten the bolts again so it has the right pressure on it. And we'll do that after about 30 minutes, and then again at about an hour and a half, and we'll cook it for two, two and a half hours. Here's our plate. Look at that. So you can see all the masks here, they're different colors. You can see the white, blue, black. It's really thin too. I don't want to bend it too much. No, it's eight inches by eight inches and uh, just under a quarter inch. It's three millimeters thick. What do you hope this all gets used for? Well, depending on what the properties are. If it's something that's brittle, as you can see, this would make an excellent clipboard, right? I can make it into rulers, key fobs, right? Yeah. Or we could make things like a countertop, and it could be used as a cutting board. This could change a lot in, in the world. It, you know, why did you kind of get into the repurposing science in the first place? Well, I'm a mechanical engineer, and I guess I'm a jack of all trades, a master of nothing, and grew up on a farm. So we're used to taking baler twine and a barbed wire to fix things. And so repurposing and reusing is sort of part of our DNA as being a Saskatchewan farm girl. And so now you could really help the environment with that Saskatchewan farm girl mentality. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And what, what a great opportunity. You look at our landfills that are filled with plastics. If we don't have to worry about the contamination, we can use sand and dirt as an additive. We've got a raw source that doesn't cost us hardly anything other than gathering it, size reducing it, and making products. Probably the number one thing is getting rid of waste that's going to pollute our environment so we don't have more stuff going into the, the landfills. And I guess what's exciting is it's current and it's solving a problem right now, today.